In this homework problem, you're asked to determine the lime and soda ash dose in milligrams as calcium oxide, because that's what we add, and sodium carbonate or soda ash to soften the Thames River water to a final hardness between 100 and 125 milligrams per liter as calcium carbonate. You're also told that the CO2 concentration is 10.5 milligrams per liter as CO2. You're told to assume that all the alkalinity is bicarbonate, that is, the pH is close to neutrality, and that the lime is 85% pure and the soda ash is 95% pure. You're asked to justify your choice with a process configuration. And then you're asked to determine the annual cost of chemicals given that quicklime calcium oxide costs $116 per U.S. ton and soda ash is $225 per U.S. ton. You're told that the design flow rate is 15 million gallons per day. And the water quality for the Thames River can be found in problem 7-21 in the textbook. Let's look at the water quality of the Thames River. You're told that the total hardness is 260 milligrams per liter as calcium carbonate. The carbonate hardness is 235 milligrams per liter. The magnesium hardness is 25 milligrams per liter and the total alkalinity is 130 milligrams per liter. So let's <clears throat> think about this in terms of a bar chart. So we can first look at calcium, and that is 235 milligrams per liter as calcium carbonate. And the Magnesium is another 25 milligrams per liter, so that gives us 260 milligrams per liter. And we have 130 milligrams per liter of alkalinity. From this, we can now calculate the carbonate hardness due to calcium, the carbonate hardness due to magnesium, the non-carbonate hardness due to calcium, and the non-carbonate hardness due to magnesium. And just remember that everything else here are other ions other than bicarbonate. So they can be chloride, nitrate, sulfate, phosphate, etc. Okay? And because we were told that the alkalinity is all bicarbonate, we can say that the pH is around 7, so it's around neutrality. So now that we have that, we can then look at using the stoichiometry. So we're given in the notes the stoichiometry, reaction 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. So think about, based on what you're given, which of these reactions are important. They won't all be important. You need to think about what which ones are. Also need to think about, we said in the notes that 40 milligrams per liter was our cutoff where mag <coughs> magnesium became problematic. We're at 25 milligrams per liter. Both of those are as calcium carbonate. So think about, do you need to remove magnesium? Or do we only need to worry about neutralizing 
the carbonic acid, precipitating the carbonate hardness <clears throat> due to calcium and the non-carbonate hardness also due to calcium. Remember, in terms of the pH, if we're removing magnesium, we need the pH to be about 11.3. But if we're only removing calcium, we can operate at, at a pH of about 10.3. So that helps to govern which of these species we actually remove. So let's think about what we're trying to do. Our goal is to treat the water to achieve a hardness of 100 to 125 milligrams per liter as calcium carbonate. Now, I talked previously about softening to the practical limits. So let's think here is your softening. If we start with 260 milligrams per liter as calcium carbonate, and we soften to the practical limits, then we have 30 milligrams per liter as calcium carbonate. And calcium plus 10 milligrams per liter as calcium carbonate. Center magnesium concentration. Now that would leave us with a water that is about 40 milligrams per liter, which is significantly lower than our goal. So what can we do? Well, we can consider bypassing some of that flow around the softening unit to blend the two streams to produce a water of 100 to 125 milligrams per liter as calcium carbonate. So our concentration is 160 milligrams per liter as calcium carbonate. Our treated flow is 40. So we can Find our Q bypass, our Q treat, and our Q desired, which is that 15 mgd. So we can develop a mass balance around this mixing area here. We'll assume we have complete mixing, steady state, no reaction in this mixing zone so that we can achieve our goal. Now think about in terms of what you would desire. In terms of the goal, think about how you want to minimize the cost. So that includes the cost of chemicals, that includes the cost of sludge treatment and disposal, and also think about this in terms of consumption of alkalinity. So develop that mass balance, determine Q treat. From that, you're going to use your stoichiometry to determine the mass of lime. And remember, we're adding lime as quick lime, and we add soda ash. And then we can determine the cost. Don't forget that you also have to neutralize the CO2. So don't forget when you're calculating your mass of chemicals, don't forget reaction one, neutralization of CO2. Now, in the previous slide, we looked at, again, we have this goal of 100 to 125 milligrams per liter as calcium carbonate. Now we, in our softening unit, 
we softened to the practical limits. But think about this. Our magnesium concentration is 25 milligrams per liter as calcium carbonate. That is significantly less than the 40 milligram per liter cutoff that we have based on where magnesium tends to be problematic in the distribution system. So again, we're starting 260 milligrams per liter as calcium carbonate. Now, if we only remove the, the calcium plus neutralizing the CO2, then we have 30 milligrams per liter as calcium carbonate for our calcium and 25 milligrams per liter as calcium carbonate for our magnesium. Our blend is still the same, 260 milligrams per liter as calcium carbonate. So instead of blending water that's treated to the practical limits, we're blending water that's treated slightly above that, about 55 milligrams per liter. Our mass balance, still the same, around that same point. We still have Q bypass, we still have Q treat, we still have the desired flow at 15 mgd, but you'll find from here your Q bypass will be slightly different from the previous. I'm thinking about which might be the best option in terms of minimizing cost and ensuring that you have sufficient alkalinity in your final water. So hopefully this will help and you can proceed with solving this problem. Good luck. I'm sure you've got this.